Hi, this is David. I'm the token architect at Next Earth, and today I'm here to talk to you about dynamic NFTs. If you haven't watched our NFT videos yet, I definitely recommend that you stop this video, go ahead, watch that and then come back because I'm going to be building on top of what I've said in that video previously. So let's start at NFTs where we finished in the previous video. They were a big thing in 2021. Right, everybody was going crazy about different NFT collectibles and different art projects that were using non fungible tokens as their choice of technology. I still remember when CryptoKitties started in late 2017 and everybody was going crazy about this whole phenomenon of digital cats trying to breed and figuring out what you can do with it, and everybody was wondering what is this technology good for. And a couple of years later, art has taken over and the technology itself didn't really change but we started seeing all sorts of different applications but they all had a limitation and this is where the whole topic of dynamic nfts come in let's take a look at a specific example an imaginary one of how does an nft work based on what we have seen in the nft market so far so let's say you have an nft that is part of a collectible series or or an in-game asset of some sort within that nft you will have like basic uh, properties uh, maybe an image that depicts what is this nft supposed to represent and then some basic information and that basic information could be anything from stats or you know if it's part of a set or anything else really these are what we can call properties so all of these nfts will have different properties that we store in the form of metadata the way you do that is that when you mean the nft itself you basically give it a, a give a metadata value to the nft that that says i don't know health points 500 mana points 500 again class warrior right? Like in-game assets, that kind of thing. The problem with this is that it's static. It's like you take a piece of paper and a pen and you write it down. The problem with this, again, is that when you say health points 500, there is one thing that you cannot do. Oops, I've already did some spoilers there. The one thing that you cannot do is to say that I'm actually going to take and delete this and say that the health point actually is now standing at 450. You cannot change the properties of an NFT if it's static. Traditional NFT technology does not allow you to change the properties of your NFTs. Therefore, you cannot really use them in a sense of gaming or loyalty programs because you need to build a whole set of different pieces of technology. Most of them will be running off chain. Most of them will have to use Web2 technologies in order to make some utility for that NFT because it's nothing more than just a piece of paper with some notes written on it with unerasable ink. Okay, so how does this technology work? As we discussed, when you have a piece of NFT with all of its properties stored as metadata in a static format, that NFT will need to communicate with a platform where you log in and connect with your wallet. So yeah, that actually says platform. So you log in with your wallet, you assign your NFTs to the platform, and then you perform activities on said platform. And then the platform will also have a database of all of these different properties and the activities and how do you different activities influence your properties, what you can and what you cannot do with those properties. I think one of the great examples of this was when you have a uh, sports card of an athlete that has different scores, different uh, stats. When you connect to the platform, the platform constantly updates the different scores that that athlete gets on, uh, on sports games. The problem with that is that it's never actually stored on the blockchain. It's never actually getting stored on your NFT. It's just stored in this database. And the problem with this is that this both are running on Web2. 
This is just a normal regular piece of online platform with an online database. It is not on chain because if it was, then what you would actually have as a truly on chain NFT technology is that this platform could also talk to your NFTs and upgrade it. The problem with this lack of upgrade with NFTs is that it can never actually give you true digital ownership. You either have a static piece of art that you cannot really use for anything, or you can build a Web2 platform for it where you can actually use that piece of art, but that platform is a centralized platform. It runs on Web2, it has an authority. When you turn off that company that is operating the platform, the whole thing goes away. So the utility and the actual value of the NFT is not stored in your NFT, it is stored at the Web2 company. And this is where we come in play, because what, at Next Earth, what we are building is a truly on-chain dynamic NFT technology. And that means that all of this will also be running on Web3 as a series of smart contracts and series of nested NFTs together where you can actually upgrade all of these different properties of your NFTs based on the smart contract. Now let's get you another example. Another example just to stay at gaming is if you have an NFT that represents a sword in a game. Now that sword can have durability or it can have, I don't know, 500 strikes remaining. And as you use that in a game, the NFT can upgrade itself through a series of smart contracts. And then when you decide to sell the NFT, you can sell the NFT with the information embedded on chain that says there are only 439 strikes remaining and the durability is only at 28%. Creating that fundamental critical piece of technology is the last important step for us as a community to create what is called true digital ownership because dynamic NFTs will bring you true utility for the crypto space and the crypto community. So how can this be used at Next Earth? As we've said previously, the metaverse is not a video game. It's an incredibly powerful gamification engine and dynamic NFTs give us the technology to achieve that. That means that we can gradually recreate the entire planet with every single piece of detail, but there is one catch. We need to make sure that every property, every resource, every material that comes onto next Earth in the form of an NFT will have to have utility. Dynamic NFTs help us achieve that on next Earth because we can turn virtual land on next Earth into a bundle of different properties that can be manipulated through a bunch of smart contracts. And those properties can be added to the dynamic NFT. And through our platform as a service offering, developers will be able to manipulate and create these properties on demand through a series of smart contracts that will be generated and will be available to any developer, regardless of whether or not they understand how to code in Web3. So let's take a Next Earth specific example. On Next Earth, for example, you will be able to create mines. Mines that can represent all sorts of different properties, all sorts of different resources, for example, gold. And those mines will be able to have high, medium or low yield uh, ties on Next Earth depending on how many NXTT you deposit into the land. Because through dynamic NFT technology, you will be able to create mines, deposit NXTT into it, and therefore the same value of a specific resource will be generated by that mine and it will all be embedded into the NFT. So if you decide to sell it, you sell the whole project, not just that one static little thing. It's not just a badly drawn monkey picture anymore. It's actually something with utility. It's actually something that you can use. This is important because we envision in a metaverse where there are a million businesses providing services that some of them will be launching their own tokens on our launchpad, but a lot of them will not want to do that. And for those, we can provide these resources to be used as in-game resources. They don't have to launch their own tokens, they can just use the materials and properties that are already existing on Next Earth land. This is why populating the Next Earth metaverse will be a community effort. 
For example, one of the visions I have about this is that users will be able to create mines either individually or as sort of a DAO. So every resource can have their own sub DAO where a community, a guild of some sort can come together, decide how to pool their own NXTT, create a bunch of mines for iron, for example, and then they can decide what to do with those mines and where they can support different companies wanting to come to Next Earth and you can create your own little economical game for the companies that are onboarding through our platform as a service offering. And this is just one example, but the true importance of dynamic NFTs, you can actually provide utility and real world use cases to non-fungible tokens through the sheer ability of upgrading and creating and manipulating the properties of your NFT on-chain.